Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. We're going to prepare a direct gold core for the central incisor. The patient had lost the central and lateral incisor in a football injury, and the remaining central incisor is devital. The tooth has changed color and has darkened considerably, so in order to make an aesthetic anterior bridge, we are going to do full coverage on this central incisor. Efforts to bleach this central incisor have been unsuccessful. I'd like to show you the radiograph. You'll note that the tooth has been filled with gutta percha. We will make a post hole two thirds the length of the root. We'd like to start now by reducing the tooth until we have a sufficient uh, tooth structure left to make a direct core. We have prepared the tooth for the direct post. You'll note that we have not reduced the tooth completely. When you have a fairly sound tooth, you reduce the length of the tooth until you have fairly solid dentin around the orifice of the root canal. Now we're going to use a piso reamer, and the piso reamer comes in different sizes. We've chosen this size because it fits down the canal very nicely. The piece of reamer also cuts more efficiently when you warm it. So we will warm this in a little alcohol flame, and this will cut the gutta percha much more efficiently. Heat this over the, the flame, and then come back to the opening that we have, and start to remove the gutta percha. You can see the gutta percha coming out. It's wise to stop and check the root canal opening to make sure that you stay right in the canal itself. The piece of reamer now will cut on its end. But it will not cut laterally very much. With the piece of reamer, then you can cut an approximate parallel parallel root canal post. When you've reached the approximate depth, then the uh, canal is dusted out, and then we will measure it with a zero probe. An old probe has notches on it, and we can use these notches as a guide in determining the length of the post hole itself. So you relate the zero probe to the post hole and then take this to the radiograph and see if you have the post deep enough. As I said before, we would like to have the post two-thirds the length of the root. If this is not deep enough, then we'll continue until we have the proper depth. We recheck the depth again to Make sure we have a, a proper depth. It's also important to remove any undercuts in this canal because in a direct pattern, if there are undercuts in the canal, this will lock the pattern in the post. The next step then is to place an anti-rotation index groove in some portion of the remainder of this tooth. In this particular case, we have the greatest amount of, a, of dentin left on the labial surface. So we'll place a index groove on the labial surface. This we'll do with a tapered carbide burr. I'm going to place it right in the labial surface here. Need not be very big, 
just to give us a, an index or a notch. We are going to take the impression of the post hole with Duralay plastic and a plastic sprue pins. A box of assorted Williams plastic pins gives you a variety of many sizes. The uh, pin then is tried in the mouth and you'll note that it has a little tip on it that'll have to be removed. You try the pin in to see if it fits properly and that is ground and tapered until that then fits up into the canal to the very end. The next step then will be to lubricate the canal with liquid petrolatum and paint Duralay in the canal. The canal has been lubricated and we'll remove the, the cotton with the liquid petrolatum and then Duralay will be painted across the orifice of the post hole and we'll paint uh, a little bit here as you see add a little liquid to that make sure it goes into the canal as you see here and then we'll take a old probe and try to force it down the canal and we'll add just a little bit more Duralay as you see here and then we take the Williams plastic sprue pin that we had prefabricated and we will dunk that in the liquid monomer and then force it up the canal you see here until it gets to the proper depth and then we'll add more Duralay around the post itself making sure that we have enough adapted in the index groove. And we build this up in a direct fashion until we have the shape of the post and the missing denton portion until we have the shape that we like. We're trying to here simulate a ideal preparation for a porcelain gold restoration. This also can be modified with wax, with inlay of wax. Now, as this starts, it starts to polymerize, you've got to tease it up and down so it doesn't get locked in the uh, canal itself. So you just lift it slowly and pry it and set it back in again and do this so that the post is not harden in an undercut area, in case there would be an undercut area. While it's still soft, you can drag it on and off, as you see here. We'll remove the post and then relubricate the canal, place the Duralay post back in, tease it up and down until the Duralay has polymerized. The Duralay has been now trimmed with a sand disc, so it has the proper contour from the labial, mesial, distal, and lingual. When we take this out, you'll be able to see the anti-rotational notch that we've placed in the pattern itself. Now the Duralay post will be placed on a sprue former and will be cast. The next step is to fabricate a temporary crown, which we have already done. The temporary crown is fabricated with a large paper clip cut off that fits into a polycarbonate crown. This is then lined with Duralay and makes a very nice temporary. This will be cemented in with a temporary cement. Let me show you the final result that we get. If you want to tip your head forward just a little bit. Okay, put your lip down. Okay. The Duralay pattern has been cast and it has been cemented in the tooth with zinc phosphate cement. The preparation has been further refined so that there's a millimeter and a half reduction on the labial surface and a half a millimeter reduction on the lingual. There's also a two and a half millimeter reduction on the incisal edge. The pin ledge preparation has also been prepared on the cuspid. 
You'll note that the pin ledge preparation has four pins. This gives added retention for a longer span bridge, as you see here. The two incisal pins are three millimeters in depth, and the cingulum pin and the marginal ridge pin are two and a half millimeters in depth. A groove has been placed also on the mesial slice. This groove gives rigidity to this slice area and the area where a solder joint will be placed. Now I'd like to show you the bridge and the patient. The patient has been wearing this bridge for several months. Open just slightly. You'll note the absence of the display of gold on the cuspid, on the pin ledge. And you'll note also that we have opened just a little bit, but that's it. Uh, you'll note also that we have matched the shade of the adjacent teeth and that we've also duplicated the incisal edges of the existing teeth to make this bridge blend in. I'd also like to show you now the lingual surface, and you'll note the amount of gold that we have on the incisal edge of the cuspid, and yet the lack of display of gold when you look at it from the labial. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.